So when you think about your table, you want it to be nice and smooth, flat, not a lot of bumps. I'm all anywhere I go, I'm always looking for freedom tables. Because I think that this is way superior. If you can find a bench or something in your town uh, that has good dimensions, you think, um, this is perfect for practice. You don't need to bring a table. You can just be like, hey, meet me at the park at this bench and we'll practice there. Uh, the main thing is, the first thing is safety. So always rock a couple of sleeves. When I, when I do freedom arm wrestling, I have like two or three of these that I wear so I protect my elbow. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen like a nice freedom table. A nice freedom table works off of consent lights. Okay, so the way that you start matches in freedom is you give consent. So instead of having a referee being like straighten this, straighten that, okay, don't move, ready, go. As soon as I'm happy, I push my light, push my button. If the other guy's happy as well, and he's pushing his light, you got two lights, referee says go. Very simple. There's no problem. I'm good, you're good, start the match. It doesn't have to be, it can, it can be, we can both be good right here. If we're both good, we're both good. Very simple. If you don't have consent lights, it works a little bit more like, uh, like sumo wrestling. So I take a grip, we're taking a grip, okay, we're kind of settling, we're talking, everything's good, okay, bang, okay. I slap, that means I'm good, okay. He slaps too, match is officially started, okay. And we kind of up it as well. So sometimes when, normally the way it works is the stronger guy taps first. Okay, that's normally how it goes. And if the stronger guy, after, after uh, the first guy taps, sorry, after the second guy taps, sometimes the first guy will actually tap again to inform him that he's totally finished and he's holding him and making him look like a chump. But anyways, so that's how you start, either with the consent lights or tap, tap. Uh, the way you win is, so if you touch the tabletop, it's, it's a loss for me, okay? I can also, another way for me to win is to hold you. Now you don't have this hand, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay? There's no peg, right? There's no peg. There's no nothing. The only rules when it comes to body contact is it cannot be unsportsmanlike. Okay? And that unsportsmanlike line is by the referee. Okay? So there can be body contact at times, but it has to be sportsmanlike. Okay? But if I, if I breach the side of the table, so if I hold you off the edge, one, two, three, that's a victory, okay? So you can win this way, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can also win on the other side, so long as, I can win on this side, so long as, so if, so if that person's pressing me, if I'm open, if I'm open. If I'm closed, okay, they, they, can't, they can't finish me. Okay, so if my shoulder's committed, it can't be a finish. Shoulder open, it can be a finish. Body movement, okay? When it comes to moving your body on the table, you have freedom to go all the way. Your hip cannot break this line, okay? If your hip breaks the line, it's a foul, okay? All fouls are running fouls. Um, elbow comes up, it's foul. Um, when it comes to straps, uh, we're, I'll tell you, we're honestly a little bit undecided. We're fairly liberal with straps, but if somebody is totally like total bogus, a referee has the ability to, to issue a loss, okay? But for the most part, it's, it's, uh, it's straps. But we haven't made that really black and white because we're honestly a little bit confused about the strap call at the moment. Uh, that's basically freedom arm wrestling. You can even get up on the table. You can jump up, you know, like, ugh. Cut across, doesn't matter. You can do all this fun stuff, okay? Uh, the sport is bigger. It's bigger. The matches, when they're done with like people who understand the game, way crazier, okay? A lot of fun. Uh, if you're brand new, you can hurt yourself more, okay? You can. But if you've been arm wrestling a little while, it's totally safe and your options are massive, so you can have a ton more fun. Uh, yeah, everything that I do is probably gonna be freedom related. I plan on doing like some walks where I like walk 
and everything's gonna be freedom based. So I know I already know of places that I've seen in like all sorts of major towns where it's just the location is perfect. You don't need to bring anything, you don't need to bring equipment. And I think that that's a big gift of our sport is the accessibility of it and freedom just takes that to a whole nother level. <coughs> well, that's the whole thing, you shouldn't. That's the thing. Yeah, I've, I made a freedom table. I made, the, the thing that we're gonna do, the, 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 the best thing about the freedom table idea, the best thing about a freedom table are consent lights. Okay, and that's what hopefully soon you're gonna be able to buy if you wanna buy something. Uh, and it, all it is, it's very simple. It's just a pressure switch that goes to a light. Super simple. Um, and, and this really is the most important thing about a freedom table. Um, you could buy, and we have made them, just flat padded tables that are great, but that's, in my opinion, not what you wanna do. What you wanna do is you wanna find a table somewhere out in the world that is a freedom table. It's like, oh, this table is perfect for arm wrestling on. And just get a bunch of sleeves and show up and do it there. Like, making arm wrestling tables to me is, I mean, it's great for our sport, and whoever made these tables, they're fantastic. <laughs> Where is the table maker? These are, really, these are great tables, I'm a big fan. What you're doing is amazing. But it's so much easier if you just find something out in the wilderness that you don't even have to adjust, you don't even have to do anything with it. Um, yeah, and that to me is just, I just, I just like things to be easy, okay? I'm just a big administration, low administrative cost. Like, I'm just a big fan of that. I've been pushing freedom since I went to Japan in 1999. Uh, when I went to Japan in 1999 for the World Championships, I saw arm sumo. And I was like, what is that? I'm like, I have no idea. To me, it looked so foreign. And I, was, I went over and I watched it and I was like, this is crazy. And then uh, I messed around with it and I was just like, wow, this is just bigger. It's our sport, but bigger. Every move, every opportunity. If you like arm wrestling for technic the technical side of it, Sumo is bigger, freedom is even bigger, okay? So all the movements, all the options, they're just more. Uh, I push it everywhere I go to everybody I talk to. It's my personal project. Here I am talking to you about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, hey, listen, I'm here for the, like until Sunday night. I, I can answer more questions if you want, or if you guys want, we can rip for a bit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm dying for hunger. Hunger, yeah. yeah. Of I don't want to keep you guys much longer. I think that we'll be closing anyway in like 15 minutes. Yeah, well, you guys got more yeah. questions? You guys want to? Yeah, I have one more. Yeah. So uh, the mindset when you're in a, in a match. Yeah. So for example, you... Um, uh, pulled uh, Dave Jakey, yeah, and so you uh, analyzed him and yeah. you made up your strategy yeah. with the Kings move. Yeah, is it that you, you you go into the match and then you say, okay, I, I go into the Kings move and try to win that way, and you stick with it, and you just try to make small uh, adjustments like climbing his hand and you know win the match with that, or is it also possible to like you feel stay. during the match, oh, it's not a good idea, I should. Going to a, maybe that's a stupid uh, question because I just start out with the arm wrestling thing, but yeah. could that be possible, or is Absolutely. it you really like you you choose your weapon basically, and then you stick with it? When when you've done a lot of work, like when you've been in arm wrestling a very long time, uh, your plans are probably going to be more accurate. Your targets are probably going to be more identified. Like uh, you know when you know Jerry Cataret, okay. And when I know myself, it's easy for me to make a fairly accurate assessment. I will probably be wrong, 5%. 5% incorrect. And in that 5%, I'll have to adjust in the match. So instead of like going like a little bit like that, I'll have to go like a little bit like this. You know, just like small, subtle changes. Um, at the beginning, your ability to be flexible and read the situation is going to be much more especially in tournament setting. 
uh, a lot of times people will go to a tournament and they'll come to the table and you'll be like, okay, I don't know who this, I, I don't know, am I gonna top roll this guy? Am I gonna hook this guy? Like, I don't really know. Um, it's good to have a plan, it's good to know, but normally you won't. So it's very important to be able to be very, very flexible, okay? And just to think more about winning, think more simply, okay, when I move my shoulder forward, does this feel good? When I pull up into his fingers, does this feel good? Where's your confidence? Being flexible in a fight has massive, massive importance. Yeah. It just, once the plan becomes really solid, it's just less at the upper levels because the targets are so well known. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your weight? Now, uh, 117, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nein, I was in two weeks ago. I think I was about 122 or 23. I give it so. Yeah. And now I'm going to get a little bit of fun. Von da ich habe zu viel geessen. Ja, ich würde, ich glaube, ich würde 280 so äh, 100 und äh, 26 oder 27 hoffentlich. Wenn ich die Relevanz wähle, 